Right, so Higher Gaming has just sent me their latest release, and this is it. This is the Seagod H600, and it's aimed at middle to high-end customer. The cheapest you can buy is just under £60, and that comes without any fans or controller. And the dearest you can buy is just under £90, and that comes with a set of fans and a controller, depending on what you want. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a look around the box, do the unboxing, have a look around the product itself, and then do a build. So with that, shall we get on with it? Right, let's have a quick look around the box then. So as a picture of what it is exactly, shows you the model number, the Seagod H600, tells you what size motherboard it will take, or maximum size motherboard and minimum size, and gives you the dimensions of the actual case itself, tells you what size graphics card it will take, up to 380 millimeter graphics card, and even shows you how many hard drives it will accept inside the case. And let's have a quick look around the side. And basically the same. It just shows you a couple of pictures, you know, don't get it wet, keep it dry, and shows you which way up it goes. But as basically the same information on the side. And the other sides are exactly the same, so I'm not going to show you a way around there. So with that, let's get on with the unboxing. So it comes in a box, in a box. <laughs> Well, wasn't expecting that. Right, let's get one done then. Let's see what you're going to get for your money, honey. Right, let's have a good look around it then. So it's got a mesh front, which is really nice. Doesn't feel like it's got any sharp edges. Very nice indeed. On one side you have a plain cover. Again, that feels like quality material. And on the other side, you have tempered glass. And I do like tempered glass because I like to see what's inside the build and you can see quite easily in one of them. On the back end you've got your normal dubbins, you know, place for your power supply, your graphics card, you've got the slider here, that's quite good. I do believe it takes a 120 or 140 in the back, so you've got a choice of two there. And what do we have on top? Right, so on the top you have an on-off button, reset button, LED button, so you can control your LED lighting just by pressing a button, two USB 2s, a USB 3, headphone socket and mic socket. Not sure which way round they go, but because there's no uh, markings on there. And a magnetic filter for keeping it all clean, which is good, easier change. And what do we have on the bottom? On the bottom, hopefully, we have another filter. Oh, I quite like them feet. They're chrome, so they're really nice. Uh, you have another filter there, which we'll just pull out. And it looks like you've got some sort of tray in there you can remove, which would be handy. So we're going to have a look inside right now. So first of all, we'll do, the, we'll do where your motherboard goes. So basically... Just undo these two screws. So it will take most size motherboards and it does actually say, actually on the case here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it says ATX, Micro ATX, Mini, Extended ATX, which is really nice. And it's got some standoffs already in there for you to set up and room for more standoffs, which is really good. Can't feel any sharp edges, which is really nice. And I do believe that is another filter. So it has another magnetic filter on the inside as well, which is really nice for the front. And also, you can put water cooling in there if you wanted to. So with that, we're going to do the backside. Oh, so what's this? Right, so it comes with an accessory box, which is very nice. And what do you get in the accessory box? It looks like a diagram. So it will give you some basic information. Yes, tells you all about the uh, components. Give, like I said, gives you basic information and tells you how to put your motherboard in, basically. That's really handy if you've never done it before. Could be quite useful. 
and just get some cable ties, some screws, and they look like they're for mounting your hard drives on. Also come from an internal speaker and some blanks. And the blanks are, if you just want to blank off your USBs, you just put the blanks in there and it just covers them over. Stops you dropping anything inside. So that's really useful. And I do believe it will take a range of hard drives. So it will take two SSDs in there, one in there, one in there. Plus you can put three 3.5 hard drives in there. Now, this will come out, unscrew it, come out, so you can put your hard drives in first because there's no way you're going to get a hard drive in now or an SSD unless you've got a really tiny screwdriver. But this all comes out anyway. And also, coming back to here, you can plug in two SSDs in here if you need to or want to. Me personally, I'll probably put them in the back out of the way and maybe even run water cooling down there one day or just fans. I also understand it will take a free 120 or 140 fans in the front, which would be nice. And I will be trying that out later when I do the build. I'll probably put in 120s, one, two, three. So stick three in now, and the filter will stop any dirt passing through there, which would be nice. So overall, looking really good. I'm looking forward to doing the build. The power supply should go in there quite easy. It looks like you've got plenty of room, which is what I like. I do like a bit of room for the power supply because I do believe a lot of manufacturers forget that you have to plug in cables to these things. <laughs> and trays like this tend to get in the way. But looking at that, it looks like there's quite a bit of room in there. So with that, shall we do the build? Right, let's get the negatives out of the way first. Right, that's it. I didn't have any negatives. I really enjoyed doing the build. It was easy to work on. I didn't cut my hands on anything, no sharp edges or nothing. That was really nice. There's a little bit of roughness on the plastic down here, but that's about it. You know, the rest of it is dead smooth. The wire mesh here is really smooth. I wasn't sure what that was going to feel like, but it's really smooth. In fact, when they told me they was doing a wire mesh front, I thought, well, I don't know. But it makes them fans stand out really well. I did mess up when I was doing the build on the two fans at the front. That one now, I put in a turbo fan instead of a duo ring. So I swapped that out and changed it over. And the bottom one here, I actually put it around the wrong way, so it's blowing out instead of in. I thought, oh my god, it's going to be a nightmare taking that tray out again and you know trying to undo it and that. But it was really easy. You know, I just pulled that tray out. It only took a few seconds to pull it out. Got it out of the way. Unscrewed the fan at the bottom with the two screws at the bottom. The other two at the top you can do from inside there. 
and screwed it back up again and put the tray back in. That tray makes a big difference on doing a build. It made it so much easier for me to put that power supply in, as you can see in my video. Removing that tray first, putting the power supply in, choosing what cables are needed, plug all them in, put the tray back in, job done. And if you want to add more power supplies, connectivity or whatever you need to do, just remove the tray again. Even if it's got hard drive connected to it, it will still be easy. Just unplug the power off the uh, hard drives, pull the tray out with the hard drives all attached. Sort out your cabling and then once you've done that, put the tray back in. It shouldn't take you five or ten minutes at the most. In fact, I was so pleased when I was doing the build, I got carried away on the fans. Originally, I was just going to stick three in there <laughs> and one in the back. But I stuck another two in as well. So I've got three duo rings in there and three turbo fans. So I've got one at the far back and two at the top. Them two up there. I thought, yeah, I'm going to get carried away here. So that's what I've done. So I've got six fans in there and I'm using their budget heatsink, which is that baby there. That budget heatsink is designed for low end processors. Don't expect it to run a high end processor and keep it cool because it won't do it. I just like it because it looks good and I don't need this computer to run extremely powerful stuff. If I was going to run something more powerful in there, I'd probably have to take that one out and put a bigger heatsink in. But, what do you think? I'm quite impressed. It's better than I thought it was going to be. They told me it's a middle to high end range and it definitely is. My personal opinion is if you're going to buy this case, buy it with the fans because I think the fans make a big difference, you know. And you get the controller to go with it. And like I said, I'll stick a link in the video description of all the fans and the case so you can go and check it out and if you want, buy them yourself. So with that, it definitely gets my thumbs up. And if you like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me the thumbs down and uh, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.